Now, think on this, right? What's your morning routine? If you're quite particular, maybe you spend, I don't know, 45 minutes in the bathroom getting ready to face the world, putting a bit of slap on. If you're like me, a five minute shower and a scrub of the old fangs and you're good to go. Think on this. My guest today, Nicola Whitehall, has to spend three hours each day bathing in oil or else her body seizes up, and that's her reality. Nicola, thank you for joining me today. How, how are you feeling? Because I understand air conditioning is quite bad for your condition at the moment. Oh, absolutely. But hi, Perry, and hi, hi to Hello. your listeners, and thank you for inviting me on the show. So Not at all. It, it's a pleasure. It's, it's only a shame I can't see you face to face. You're in Liverpool at the moment, aren't I you? am indeed. Sunny Liverpool here, actually. Yeah? Is it lovely? So not too bad, not too although bad. I've got the Uggs on and the gloves on because I cannot um, take the risk that if I do go into an air conditioning building just in case, uh, it, will, it, will, it will trigger my symptoms. This is it. You have to sort of really wrap up for winter in all seasons. Well, it, win winter is usually in hibernation. Yeah. And it's just, it's just really not worth going out because if I get too blue and then my skin um, becomes delicate, then I form ulcers. So this is usually on the toes and the fingers. And this is down to the Raynaud that's syndrome. That's isn't right, it? yeah, um, which can literally um, cause the blood vessels to narrow um, and reduce to the extremities. So ca causing the ulcers, which take ages to heal, usually yeah. get infected. So that, there's antibiotic um, implications as well. Um, but uh, in wor a worst case scenario, um, the the medical option is uh, for an amputation. So, uh, hence I live in a boots and um, since you have wow. uh, gloves because um, I'm um, lucky I've still got my uh, five or ten fingers and toes. And this is only half of your, your complication? Absolutely. The, the, the other part is um, scleroderma, which is systemic sclerosis. Okay, tell me how this works. Um, well, that, that's really where, where the, 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 the real-life tin man um, c comes in because uh, it's, an, it's an autoimmune connective tissue disease. Okay, so, so, so sorry, Nicola, you're going to have to break that one down for us. <laughs> Basically, the, you know when you get a cold or um, if your body suffers illness, then your white blood cells get into action um, and start trying to fight the, yeah. the infection? which is a good thing. Absolutely, but unfortunately, with, with my diagnosis, that my white blood cells are seeing something within my body as being foreign and therefore instigating um, an attack in actual fact it, so it's just attacking my body mm. so what it does is um, produces what's called collagen which is um, in, in every cell really so that, that's what makes uh, excessive collagen makes the body become stiff. What's collagen for normally? Um, I think it's for keeping you, you, you um, firm and y y you know people have collagen uh, implants in their face don't they to right. their wink okay. wrinkles and, and things so it gives it a bit of structure at a cellular level does it bit of, yes bit of, yeah. yeah but you've got so too much of it that's right so consequently it's literally like be, being the tin man or, or y y you know concrete so that, that's why um, by ba bathing um, in oil is obviously to moisturise and then hydrate the skin. This is for three hours each day. You do it yeah. in the morning, do you? Yeah. Uh, otherwise, literally, when, as soon as I wake up, that's, what, that's when it starts. <laughs> because when I first wake up, um, I, I take uh, about ten minutes. Or, I mean, uh, I, any arthritis sufferer will, will understand these symptoms most okay. definitely. Um, because it's not just the skin. It's actually all the joints as well that it affects, as well as internal organs. I'm fascinated that the oil can penetrate to you your joints? Well, uh, wh whether it's the o oil to the joints or whether it's the combination of the relaxation plus being in the warm water, which most certainly it, it relieves some of the, because the, the, it's, it's also, I'm in constant pain, mm. um, so that definitely helps with the pain and, and you know, try, try to get things moving. Are these two conditions, Raynaud's and the, uh, how do I say this, scleroderma? Yes, yeah, scleroderma. How, how are these two syndromes linked, these conditions? Well, um, it, at the moment, um, I, I think the statistics are that um, there are 10 million sufferers in the UK of Raynaud's, which um, is actually 3 to 20% of the adult population worldwide. Really? Um, however, um, only 10% of females um, will, will suffer um, with, well, every female, 10% will suffer with from Raynaud's to some degree. So this is like chill blains perhaps or poor yeah, circulation? Yeah, that's right. So you think, kind of your fingers literally go blue and then white, so loose sensation, and then when the blood does eventually return, it's as though someone's using hot pokers in, in, in your fingers. But very painful. And we've all had that in cold weather, haven't we? We've all experienced the chill blains. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is... This is uh, in, in some women, it just happens yes. more, more easily. Yes. 
Now, scleroderma is, is the immune system in the blood vessels and the connective tissue. Um, so the, there is a link. If you have scleroderma, the chances are that you are likely to have Raynaud's. Okay. However, if you have Raynaud's as, a, as the primary, then it's unlikely that you will develop scleroderma. Which is your primary condition? Scleroderma. Right. I don't do things by half, sorry. No, no. <laughs> but ultimately, you, you, you know, if this condition is diagnosed early enough, so by tight skin, um, puffy fingers, um, difficulty in swallowing, um, then if a medic can diagnose it um, quick enough, then the first five years are when the systemic sclerosis is at its most active. Now, um, there is, currently there is no cure, which is really my mission now for going out and telling all about it. Um, because I've had it for 16 years. I was 24 when I was diagnosed. Mm. And literally, it's taken over my life now. It is a full-time job managing these symptoms. Um, I'm very lucky because I'm 14 years past my medical expiry date. I was really? Yes. So, so let's put that in cold, hard language. You were told you were going to die. Correct. At 24, I'd just signed up to do a law conversion course. So I had a degree in biology. Yeah. Um, I'd always wanted to be a barrister. So um, um, signed up to do the, the law degree, um, part-time distance learning. I was working in the pharmaceutical industry as a medical rep. And these symptoms came on literally overnight. And, um, yeah, w went to the GP, had the, the blood test. And it's a specialist bl blood test that um, can detect the systemic sclerosis yeah. marker. So that came out positive and then literally um, was backwards and forwards. I lived in Notting at the time and was backwards and forwards to Queen Medical Centre every week, seeing the professor there and he, he sat me down and said, you know, get give up your idea of being a barrister you'll be in a wheelchair by Christmas so that's three months um, and you've probably got 15 months that you're looking at there is no cure to this um. how, did, how did you react Nicola? <laughs> um, looked at him and I thought you don't really know me very well and so um, I did you're, you're talking about the fighter within Nicola here, ma right? well ma maybe Perry but uh, you know my dream was to be a barrister so you, you know to say that to me it, it was uh, literally pulling the rug out from under my feet at the time I didn't have, I, you know, I hadn't got a family, so literally it was only only me to think about. So I had had my head in the sand for a few months, and then the symptoms were really, you know, quite severe. So I ended yeah. up because I was in the pharmaceutical industry, I was lucky that I knew who to be referred to. So I was referred down to um, Professor Black in the Royal Free in London, who now um, is, is um, moved on into the NHS. But her um, person at the time that uh, is now taken over is Professor Denton. So I'm very blessed. To, that I've been under his care for the last 15 years mm. um, because he is an international expert in this diagnosis. So I think um, the combination of um, him and Professor Black, with, literally within the first 30 seconds of me being in front of Professor Black when I first met her, I just felt that she wanted to help me get better. She didn't. She didn't say, you know, it's going to be a walk in the no, park. No, you don't want to be promising people false hope, do you? Well, that, that, that's it. But she, she also didn't see, you know, let me get rid of my dream, basically. And Professor Denson helped me, supported me throughout the whole of my um, time at bar school, my um, training qualifying and um, during my time at pupillage so okay well yeah. look, so so the scleroderma we've talked about how uh, surprisingly common Reynolds is but the scleroderma how how rare an illness is that it's probably um, I think the, the statistics are it affects approximately about 8,000 people in the UK right is it mainly women or, or is it sort of um, I, again I think the statistics show that um, that women are um, predominant but there are um, yeah. and especially postmenopausal age which is interesting because I was 24 I, I want to explore a bit more about your, your state of mind at this age because you're a young lady and an ambitious and very clever young lady oh thank you <laughs> who's been told at this stage in her life such devastating news I want to talk a little bit more in detail about okay. how, how you cope with that if we can a bit if you've just joined us halfway through I'm talking to Nicola now Nicola's got a double whammy of scleroderma and Raynaud's syndrome which has affected her life so much so that now she's at the stage where she has to bathe in oils for three hours a day before she can even think about getting going on the day. Uh, more to talk to with Nicola in just a moment. 
right now, Liz, what are the roads doing to us? A couple of problems this morning, actually, Perry. As you head along the A53, be aware it's closed at Baldwin's Gate in both directions. There's a vehicle which has shed a load of hay onto the carriageway just between Sandy Lane and the A51 at Blackbrook. Now, police are at the scene directing traffic as you head between Acton and Blackbrook. Uh, recovery work has started, but we understand it's likely to be closed for the rest of the morning. The M6 going north is queuing. The exit slip road partially blocked. A wide load has broken down at Junction 19. This is the Nutsford exit. It's causing congestion back on the main carriageway to Junction 17, which is the exit for Sandbatch and the A534. Not looking too bad on the A500 currently this morning, and it seems to be OK on the A50 as you head through towards Utoxter. If you see a problem, call us on 01782 208 008. Travel you can trust. Every 20 minutes. BBC Radio Stoke. Well, hello there, lovely listener. D-Love here again, back to share the love for digital radio. What's that? You want to go for a beautiful picnic, but you don't want to miss your favorite show on BBC Radio Stoke? Well, don't you worry, my little muffin. D-Love's got the answer. With digital radio, you can have the best of both worlds. That's right. You can listen almost anywhere, on your smartphone, laptop, or tablet. Don't just sit there. Grab your picnic blanket and tell everybody, help share the love. If you love radio, go digital. For more information on switching to digital radio and on coverage in your area, search online for BBC Digital Radio.
Yeah, the remix of that, Kylie Minogue's Can't Get Out of My Head with Blue Monday, um, by New Order. It, it, it really works well. They used it, didn't they, for some award ceremony? It was like she came out and everybody thought, it was, hang on, Blue Monday, what's going on? It was brilliant, really. Inspired, inspired mashup, what you'd call a mashup. I thought it was very good. BBC Radio, so coming up to half past ten, Friday morning, Chicago, uh, and hard to say I'm sorry, uh, is uh, my next song, and I'll have that for you in a moment. Hello to Joanne via Facebook. She says, share and share alike. This is, now, this is about my ticket. Somebody offered me a ticket yesterday at Sainsbury's in Stafford. And uh, one, one of the traffic wardens was sharking around. Da-na, da-na, da-na. And I felt, I, I felt like a criminal. And I actually wanted to know if I was actually being a criminal. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I might take myself to the police station right after this show. She says that they do say you are not... They are not transferable, so I sh- probably shouldn't have taken the ticket. Uh, George says you'd better hand yourself in. Oh dear, this is. <laughs> I will, George. I know you think you're joking, but this will this will weigh heavy on my shoulders. Uh, Stephen says it's illegal to pass. It can't be illegal. Someone's paid for it, Stephen. It's like if I pay for a three-piece suite and I sit in it three times and I give it to someone else. I can do that, can't I? I paid for it. It's my, I, 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 hang on a minute, what am I doing? My guest today is a trained lawyer. <laughs> Nicola. Hi. <laughs> uh, should I hand myself in? I think it's very serious, Perry. Very, very serious. What is the law? Well, um, presumably it will be, it will come down to what is actually on the ticket and what's on, on the sign um. Um, there and then. And if the lady, as one of your listeners pointed out there, that if it does say non-transferable. Yeah. That, um, but I'm not sure um, whether the, the what the statute is uh, that, uh, that, that that would be. I would. My defence would be: Look, I bought it. It's mine. You can't tell me what to do with it. I like the recycling one myself. <laughs> it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. it's very common efficient. sense. Uh, if you tuned in halfway through Kylie or halfway through the travel news, my guest today is Nicola Whitehill. Uh, now you have um, a very complicated morning routine because of your two conditions. You've got uh, Raynaud's syndrome, which is a lot more common than we, we realise. What we were saying, between 3 and 20% of the population suffer with some form of Raynaud's. Worldwide, that is. And there's, def- um, there's statistics of 10 million sufferers in the UK. And, and this can be from the quite mild, sort of chill blaming yes. version to what you have, where you can yes. get, uh, what we say, saying, ulcers. Developed. Yes, yeah. And also you have scleroderma. Have I said that right? That's right, yep. Uh, which is systemic sclerosis. That's now, this, right. is, this affects your joints. Too much collagen, it's your antibodies are getting a bit uh, overactive. Yes. Um, it also uh, um, affects the internal organs as well. So yeah. every year I have to have my lungs and my heart tested. I'm um, lucky that I haven't got, well, I've got minimal involvement on the internal organs, but some um, patients do have um, quite serious lung involvement that might require them to have an oxygen um, cylinder, as well as there can be kidney involvement as well. Some patients might have to go into dialysis a couple of times a week. You've outlasted your initial prognosis. You were told you had 15 months. That's right. On, uh, left, and uh, clearly you've, you've shattered that. <laughs> 14 that years post yeah. my medical sell by date. So, but would have it have been the internal organs getting involved that would have been your undoing had you followed the normal path? Poss- possibly, path? yes. Yeah, that, that's and certainly um, when the lung lung involvement um, gets quite severe, yes. I want to know how you coped with having <laughs> that information hanging over you. Go on with being a barrister or, or, or qualifying, you know, studying to be a barrister. I, I truly do believe, really, that the first few years of diagnosis, um, because I didn't have time to sit around and um, feel sorry for myself, I literally wanted to pass my law exams, that I had my head in law books. So I think the fact that I was distracting my head that by doing something productive, as well as the visualisation. I use visualisation techniques, especially when I was on a chemotherapy trip down in the hospital in London, um, and I was the youngest person by half the, the age of everyone else that was on the ward, and I was on the harshest treatment. So why are you on chemotherapy? I thought that was a cancer treatment. Well, to, literally um, to, to suppress the immune system. So I had seven years, um, I had trips as well as tablets, and um, really that's, that's what got the condition stable. Um, and so, uh, y- 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 you know, um, my immune system is, well, I'm immunocompromised now as a result, so I'm very um, particular as to, you know, going into groups of lots of people, and if anyone's coughing or sneezing anywhere near me, I have to, y- y- you know, try and stay away because I've had so many chemo- um, chemotherapies. Yeah. But, um, yeah, while I was on the drip, the, the, the vision that kept me alive was literally being in my wedding gown at Nottingham Crown Court 
and um, funnily enough the day that I did actually achieve that which was possibly a few years later um, three or four years later a, a little voice said to me now right you've done this what's next yes <laughs> you you kind of lent on that that vision that's, that's right yeah so and uh, again I do feel that the the medical support that I had to to you, you know to um, back me up with that dream with that vision um, really played a huge important role in in me you know turning this diagnosis around I, I look in my own heart and I'm, I just know that if I'd been hit with something like that I'd have given up I think how do you how, did you ever feel like giving up well sometimes but you, 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 you know um, I, I mean there was, there was one time when my mum bought me some um, flowers for my birthday which was probably my 25th birthday and she remembers that I did say to her do you think I'll still be alive by the time that you, you, you know that they um, that they complete their cycle um, oh, but okay. I, I, yeah, I, you, you know, to be honest, I never really, I never accepted it. <laughs> and as I said, you know, when the doctor said that to me, I just looked at him and I thought, you don't know me. Yeah. Um, but you, you know, th th really, it's not been a walk in the park. It is. Really it's, it's a no. huge discipline. And even now, you know, 16 years down the line, it's a huge discipline. Um, I have to be very, uh, literally religious in in the the morning routine, which is the bathing, um, because being in constant pain as well with the neuromuscular skeletal pain um, that's been caused due to the damage. Um, and in particular my back, I um, have a lot of pain with my back and the option is to take painkillers but um, the strong painkillers that actually work then come with the side effects of you, uh, you know projectile vomiting and um, the uh, other side effects that uh, I, I don't particularly like so no. now I try and manage it um, but then it's, it's um, you know, planning um, like with my time as well. So, for instance, today I knew that I had to come into the, the um, studio. So, yesterday um, I tried to minimise um, activity, so exercise. And the spontaneity goes out the window. Well, sort of, but if, if it's really worth it, then I'll be up for it. Yeah. <laughs> but also my diet, Perry, um, in December um, I bought a juicer. And um, I spent the first seven days just having liquid juices because with scleroderma affecting the stomach, as well as all the chemotoxic drugs that I've had over the years, yeah. I really felt that my body needed a bit of an overhaul. So um, I did seven days of juicing on following the Jason Vale Juice Master program. <laughs> <laughs> and now I have two juices a day, so I have a high vitamin C juice in the morning because I can't, again, with the stomach involvement, yeah. um, I can't have uh, acid, acidic things. So, you know, any form of juice it really um plays havoc with with, with um, giving me heartburn okay so how do, how do you handle the juices and you have to choose specifically non-acidic well n no if, if oh. i'm having um, so in the morning what i'll do is juice uh, an orange for vitamin c half a grapefruit which is meant to reduce calcinosis which is okay. uh, another part of scleroderma which um is the latent part of scleroderma and, and really can be quite painful and disabling but they're very acidic aren't they um, which, sorry? Th those two fruits are very acidic. Yes, so what I'll do is juice those with some pineapple and then put it in the blender with um, some probiotic yoghurt. Okay. So almost, um, y y y you Neutralize know, it. that's right. And then later on I have a green juice which includes juicing two apples, cucumber, lime, um, for vit vitamin C again, um, pineapple, and then put that in the blender with a teaspoon of spirulina, a teaspoon of wheatgrass and a probiotic capsule. So this wheatgrass and spirulina are really powerful antioxidants yeah so again because with me not having very good digestion then this is I've found is a good way for me to absorb the nutrients and are you always searching I, I have a friend Absolutely. who's got um, psoriasis and, and there's no one cure for psoriasis no. No. Is, is it a bit like that yes or, or always uh, and, and swapping tips I mean the internet what well, um, has, has been a, a great great help because uh, again our, um, especially during the winter when it could be quite lonely you know just staying home all the time that the internet I really do feel as though I've got the world in my lounge mm. and also being able to swap um, tips with other um, sufferers and, and uh, as well as with my story you know 16 years down the line to say look you, you, you know I'm not in the wheelchair um, which to be fair I can't walk very far and um, you, you, any form of exercise is, is a huge challenge but um, you, you, you know I just try, try and do what I can so you, you can't work any longer and, and you, as you say you hibernate in winter effectively yeah. so what do, what do you do now Oh, well, um, <laughs> living the dream with my two little doggies and um, 
I started, uh, if, if my fingers aren't too bad, although I've had it a few months off, but I've been knitting squares for orphans in South Africa. Yeah. You knit the squares, send them off, and then the volunteers will make them into a blanket, as well as I've been uh, a bit of a cupcake um, baking uh, queen now. So yeah. uh, the soup kitchen's very... Um, this is why this should have been a face-to-face -face interview. She does cupcakes. <laughs> Someone slipped up. Didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> so, but, 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 you, you know, um, re really, it's um, just trying to keep my mind um, stimulated. And I listen to um, Hay House Radio a lot, which uh, has really definitely helped me with uh, the positive outlook. Um, so what is this radio? Um, they call it Radio for the Soul. It's a lady called Louise Hay, who um, actually cured herself from cancer when she was 60. Um, and she wrote a book about it and it became a huge bestseller and so then she's got her own um, publishing company as well as the radio station so hayhouseradio.com and it's free and it's it's basically a radio station that helps you with a positive mental yes, attitude yes I think it? so yeah. and um, one of my other favourites is uh, Dr Wayne Dyer um, he's the ranked fourth world's largest spiritual guru. So um, his his work, his books, uh, and uh, um, his um, um, downloads uh, again have, have really helped because, uh, as he says, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Mm. You don't sound diminished in any way. Your spirit sounds strong. Oh, that, well, that, that's it. And the Bible tells us I'm not particularly religious, although I believe. Well, I was going to ask love. you about that. It, 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 does does faith help you? Well, I, I have got a faith, and uh, I, you know. I believe that God is love and I believe that everything is an energy um, and uh, that, y y y y you know, love, unconditional love is the highest energy that there is. So, uh, I again, I believe that, y y you know, by trying to keep my mind positive and to stimulate my mind and do things that make me feel good, that a scleroderma doesn't like that. Whereas no. if I have stress and I'm worrying and I'm feeling sad, Beads off that. scleroderma says, yippee! Mm. <laughs> So, so that's part of your visualisation. Definitely. Yeah. And I've and recently read um, The Way of the Peaceful Warrior by Dan Millman. Have you heard of that? I book? have not, no. It was in, uh, came out in the 80s and it was actually made into a film. And, um, well, it's really helped me, again, with when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. I've written that down, The Way of the Peaceful Warrior. I've got a blog, Perry, if you, if you like my inspirational quotes. Okay, and, and, you, and the, the, this blog is... Uh, Cosmic Fairy, yeah. 444. This is sounding weird, Cosmic <laughs> Fairy. Yeah. <laughs> Cosmic Fairy, okay. 444, four, four, the three yeah. numbers. Yeah. So, f number four, three times. Four, four, four. Um, blogspot.co.uk. Yeah. Okay, I'll have a gander. And basically, I put on there inspirational quotes which I have, um, have resonated with me and have helped me on on this journey. Especially, <laughs> sorry, Harry. Do your dogs, what's, what are your dogs' names? Daisy and Mitzi. Hey, do, do, you, do you feel they give you the unconditional love that you feel so important as the highest, or do you say the highest energy? Oh, definitely, we're the dream team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, we're the dream team. So, and they go everywhere with me yeah. if, I, if I go anywhere, which, again, with an illness like this, it's very difficult to, well, um, to go away, to stay away. Um, I'm very fond of my bed um, because rest is very important. Mm. You know, if I don't lay straight for eight hours the night before, and yes, I might be tossing and turning and pain and stuff, but if I've not been horizontal for at least eight hours, then the next day I know trying to move around, trying to walk around is going to be more painful and more difficult. I want to talk to you more about the Raynaud's and Sleroderma Association in a moment, which I know you're a big Yeah, they've been brilliant. Um, and uh, I'll do that in just a moment. Let me okay. Some, uh, travel news, and then we'll have Chicago as well. I'll have to say I'm sorry. I hope you're a Chicago fan. Definitely. <laughs> we'll arrive with that one. Okay, I'm speaking, if you just tuned in, I speak to Nicola Whitehill, uh, who suffers from the twin complaints of scleroderma, uh, which I've never heard of until today, and Raynaud's syndrome. All right, Liz, what about the roads? Uh, well, Perry, there's a couple of problems which are ongoing, likely to cause you delays. Around Ford Windsgate, the A53 remains shut in both directions. So Laurier shed a load of hay onto the carriageway. Recovery work continues between Sandy Lane and the A51 at Blackbrook. That closure. Police are having to direct traffic, but it's rather slow in the area and causing you delays between Acton and Blackbrook and likely to be closed for a while longer yet. On the M6 going north, there's a lane out on the exit slip road as a wide load has broken down at 
Junction 19. Uh, so this is the 556 Knotsford exit. Traffic's rather slow and uh, leaving the M6 at that junction, though the queue has got a little bit smaller. It's not back to Junction 17 anymore. Uh, but just be mindful as you approach Junction 19, you will get caught in some traffic there. On to public transport, London Midland have buses replacing trains between Cambridge, Walsall and Rugeley, Trent Valley. It's because of engineering works today and tomorrow. If you see a problem, call us on 0782 008 008. Get the latest online. bbc.co.uk slash doke. BBC Radio Stoke. Read the parking ticket I took from uh, another car parker. Is that, is, that, is that the noun? I don't know. Anyway, uh, Gary from Westland says you should have a public flogging for your crime, Perry. Do you, I only think you're half joking as well, Gary. I, I don't like the cut of your jib at all. Hello, Nicola. Hi. Right, so <laughs> if you've just tuned in, um, Nicola suffers from two conditions, System- systemic sclerosis and Raynaud's syndrome. Um, and it basically has taken over your life. Your work, your job is... Is managing your conditions. It, isn't it is at the moment, but again, I still haven't given up. That um, y- y- you know, uh, I can't go back to doing something similar that I used to do. But well, what is your future? Is there a cure in the offing? Uh, uh, what's Professor Denton saying? Oh, well, he's school? doing his best. Um, definitely, I think he's doing his best. But at the moment, there, there is no cure. But, um, it's d- it's literally disease modifying drugs. Who's researching this at the moment? Who's looking into it? Because it sounds like quite a. How many, how many sufferers are there in the UK? Do you say eight thousand? Yes, it's yeah. Scleroderma, but there's literally 10 million for Raynaud's mm. um, and that's in the UK alone so um, I'm hoping that uh, the, the pharmaceutical companies and um, y- y- you know the, the scientists are um, really y- 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 realising the need the need for this mm. uh, is there a like this the uh uh, the, the cancer charities, which are raising money, cancer research yes. in particular. Yeah. Uh, is there a similar thing for you? Yeah, condition? yeah. The, the Raynaud and Scleroderma Association in El Sega um, have been absolutely brilliant. Um, they've. Uh, I have um, to correct you there. It's all Sega. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Local spot. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, their website is Raynaud, so R A Y N A U D S dot org dot uk. Um, and there's some fantastic information on there. Um, in fact, w- w- what it, what's not included is really not worth knowing. As well as um, the, um, the volunteers at the at the office, um, as, as well as Liz and Anne, yeah. um, a re- really good source of information and um, re- really understanding as well. Now you work for to help sufferers, don't you? I presume you work from home, do you? Um, yes. Yeah. And and how do, how, how do you help people? Well, just if, if anyone, um, any any questions or, um, y- y- you know, advice, and again, with me being 16 years ta- down the line, then um, um, I'm, I'm quite, uh, it's, it's, you know, had it for quite some time. Mm. Are you one of the longest serving sufferers? I think so, yeah, and yeah. also Anne, who set up the Raynaud and Scleroderma Association, um, thank goodness for Anne doing that, so I think she's had it over 30 years. Wow. So, um, and, and, and she, in a sense, may represent your future. How, how is Anne? And, and oh, how is she coping? Is she living the same life you're living? Um, yeah, she, she's very busy spreading the word. And, uh, of course, bringing, you, you know, the association, she's raised over a million pounds, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, I think she's the welfare officer now with the association. So, uh, again, um, what's, what's not to know about the condition, then, uh, you, you know, um, Anne, Anne will know everything, really. Do... Does anybody who, who gets this condition ever get better from it? Um, I don't know the answer to that, Perry. I hope, I hope that I'd like to think that I've got better. Yeah. Um, but again, I think it's a personal responsibility thing, you know. I don't push myself in the winter to go out knowing that I'm going to go blue. Y- y- you know, um, it's management rather than cure so. at y- the moment. Yes, yeah, y- y- you know, literally taking responsibility and accepting, yes, I have this diagnosis and the medics are doing the best that they can, but they can't write a prescription that they're going to give to me and, well, hey, it's gone, you know, I've got to do my bit as well. Yeah. So if that means um, wrapping up or, y- you know, I mean... Um, and you do wrap up in the summer, you're in like, boots oh, yeah. and gloves. And yeah. Is that uncomfortable just because of the heat? Well, sometimes, but it's, um, y- you know, it's easier to take a, to l- take a layer off yeah. than, than be cold. But I wear more layers than an onion. And would you be better off if you moved to a warmer climate? Perhaps? Well, I did try that. Ten years ago, I lived out in Fort Venture with one of my pals um, in the Canary Islands. And was that better? 
Um, sort of, but you know, everywhere's air conditioned. Right. So that uh, de defeats it, you know. Um, so uh, no, I'm thinking I'm, I'm better in the UK, but in at winter time, possibly better get go, going abroad. Yeah. Um, but at, at the moment, uh, like I say, um. Um, y y you know, just trying to literally find the, the, the survival guide that works for me and if I can, um, y y you know, pass on those tips to help others and, uh, you know, try and hopefully in my lifetime be out there so that uh, a cure can, um, y y you know, be found. Yeah, hopefully one day. Well, your blog spot again, your blog is uh, Cosmic Fairy 444 at blogspot.co.uk, is that right? No, Cosmic Fairy 444 um, dot blogspot. Dot blogspot. Dot co dot uk okay. and literally it's um, the, the, some of the phrases that I have um, read or come across that you know that I've found that have helped me with deal with this because it is a chronic illness you, you, you know um, um, I don't really I, I feel blessed that I'm past the medical sell by date but uh, you, you know literally I've had to now I'm on a day to day and I, and I do things that make me feel good if it doesn't make me feel good I'm not doing it. Okay. I wish you all the best. Can I just say, Nicola, listening to you, and it's, it's a real shame I've not been able to meet you face to face, but y you sound so buoyed up. You sound so energetic. Oh, thanks, Perry. You've got to get juicing. <laughs> juicy, you will never look Oh, that. you're like my friend Hannah. She goes on about juicy. Oh, it, it, also, honestly, I cannot say that the... I don't drink tea or coffee, so no caffeine. Just some juice. Yeah. I must have actually, she does some lovely concoctions. I don't know what's in them. I, yeah, I don't right. ask. But I give it a good stir and, and don't let it settle because it looks weird when it settles. Well, that's it. And yeah. you just drink <laughs> it knowing that you, it's going to make you feel yeah, good. Yeah. It's been lovely speaking to you, Nicola. Thank you, Perry. Sincerely, I wish you all the best. Well, thank Thank you, and, th and thanks to all you listeners as well for uh, for tuning in. No worries at all. Well, lovely lady, that's Nicola uh, Whitehill, who suffers with the twin conditions of sleroderma and Raynaud's syndrome.